Okay, everybody, thank you for being here. I'd like to call this regular meeting of the Board of Trustees to order uh, Monday, February 23rd at 7.10 p.m. Have the roll, please. Here. 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 Notice of this meeting was posted in Village Hall and on the Village website and has been filed in the office of the Village Clerk. Official action may be taken. Susan Calgene, Village Clerk. Thank you. Um, seeing as I don't believe we have any agenda items for executive session this evening, um, we can just move straight past that. Um, so could everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it exists, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stay standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Okay, a couple of announcements uh, to get us started tonight. Uh, the first is directly after this board meeting, uh, the State of the Village address will start. Um, so that will be at 8.30 p.m. right here in the loft at SOPAD. Um, coffee and a chat. South Orange's Community Policing Unit is encouraging groups of residents to meet <coughs> informally with, with officers to discuss uh, law enforcement issues they face every day, such as neighbors with unsightly properties, suspicious neighborhood activity, or misunderstood ordinances. Um, if you're concerned um, about airing your issues in front of others, then you can also ask for a one-on-one -on -one session. Um, the Coffee with the Cop will be launched in March and will be held quarterly throughout the years. The meetings will be held at local coffee houses. Um, the dates, times, and locations will be announced. Um, I'd like to thank the Public Safety Committee um, for helping organize this program. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, when the weather warms up and kids are moving about town, South Orange police officers will be watching for their good behavior. Practices such as wearing a helmet while bicycling or skateboarding or crossing with the light and not jaywalking. Kids who display good behavior will be issued a positive behavior citation from South Orange police officers. Um, this is a program from our uh, public safety committee and our police department. Our police chief, Jim Chalel. Uh, said of the program that it's a, it's a great way to let kids know that cops are the good guys and it's positive reinforcement and certainly something that everybody on the board believes very strongly in trying to create as much of trust we can um, between our police department and our community. Um, along with the citation, the child will also get a voucher for free ice cream and slice of pizza. I have to ask somebody what the cutoff age for this is. Um, you don't qualify. I don't qualify, all right. <laughs> um, so the program is sponsored by the Village, the Police Department, and the Village Center Alliance. Um, Cold Stone <coughs> Creamery and Pirates Pizza are donating the rewards. Uh, the Police Department has also asked us to let you know about some uh, really great programs that they offer uh, homeowners. This is protection for your home and property. Um, you can arrange for one of these free services. One is a home security survey, so you can let a South Orange police officer take stock of your home to identify ways that you can improve its safety. The officer will assess things like lighting around the house, hedges that uh, burglars could use for hiding, um, storing uh, valuable items, accessible wireless networks, uh, looking at your alarm system, and more. Um, so if you'd like to arrange for that, or a bicycle registration where you can get your bike engraved with a unique serial number, the police will keep that serial number on file. If the bike does get stolen, it does make it easier to find. Um, and if it does get found, it will make it much easier to return back to the owner. Um, so if you'd like to learn a little more about either of those programs or sign up, <coughs> you can do so at 973-763-3000, extension 7802. Um, I've also been asked by the Village Center Alliance to make an announcement about Spark House, which is relocated to their new location, which we congratulate them on, at Nine Village Plaza, right next to Spiota Park. <clears throat> March Village Madness. Um, Seton Hall's very own is headed to the Women's NCAA Final Four Championship. 
To honor them, the South Orange Village Center Alliance is presenting March Village Madness, a promotion with a game card featuring brackets for 64 village businesses. From March 19th through April 6th, you can spend money in as many of these businesses as you can um, and save your receipts. Whoever collects the receipts from the greatest number of businesses by April 5th wins $500 of gift cards from South Orange merchants. Um, only one receipt per business is eligible, and you can go to sovillagecenter.org for complete details on the program. Um, another great initiative by, uh, by the Village Center to help encourage people to shop downtown. Um, next is the first annual South Orange Seniors Prom. Um, um, uh, village elders age 65 and older uh, are expected Sunday, April 12th for the first annual South Orange Seniors Prom from 2 to 5 p.m. in Seton Hall's Chancellor's Suite. Uh, you can dress formally or casually as you choose. Uh, Mark Pressel, a former Broadway musical director and village senior, will choose the musical selections. There'll be uh, food, and this free event is co-sponsored by South Orange Seniors and the Seton Hall University Division of Volunteer Efforts. Um, and I think we're going to hear a little bit more about that program in a minute uh, as well. Uh, the next is Restaurant Week, which is April 6th through 12th. <coughs> Restaurants will offer 15% off their entire menus, alcohol excluded, during South Orange Restaurant Week, um, which is April 6th through 12th again. Um, you can find more about that at sovillagecenter.org. Um, and the annual meeting for the South Orange Village Center Alliance is, is rescheduled for Monday, March 2nd at 7 p.m. at Rickleton's Village Tavern. Join them as they review their 2014 progress and their plans for 2015. Um, and at this time, I'd like to uh, ask our members from our uh, Senior Advisory Committee to come up and add if there's anything you'd like to add about that or any other announcements that well, I'd like to make. If there is repetition, it's for emphasis. <laughs> um, we at South Orange Seniors and the Division of Volunteer Efforts of uh, um, Seton Hall are sponsoring together annual seniors prom to be held on Sunday, April 12th from 2 to 5 at the Chancellor Suite at Seton Hall. This will absolutely be the event of the season. Uh, as um, Alex mentioned, catering is offered by Seton Hall and the music selected by Mark Pressel. Um, we are also going to have wonderful entertainment. Um, I'm sure you all know or know of Perry Smilo, who was sensational with guitar and song, and she will entertain. And <coughs> we're going to have a folk dancing group who will demonstrate and offer audience participation. And all of this is the admission fee is one can of food, which will be donated to a food bank that Seton Hall sponsors. We must have the names of attendees by March 17th. Um, and we also want to thank in advance Mark Hardwick for offering transportation on Jitneys and um, along with Harold Colton Max of the JCC, they have promised us Jitney service, which we need already. We have over 50 names, which we think is pretty great. Mm -hmm. um, and but one of the things that we do have to qualify is that you must be a South Orange resident. And the other thing is that you must be, I guess this is an advantage to aging, 65 or older. But we also, while we know that none of you reaches that mark yet, we would like to invite all of the Board of Trustees to be our guests at that event. You, of course, can bring a bottle of food. It's going to be wonderful, and if you could spread the positive aspects of this in the town, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I just have one question, it's very <laughs> important. Uh, can you make sure to save me a dance? Aww. Aww. 
That's my only I question. I like <laughs> <laughs> My Jan Callick uh, tally is almost full. <laughs> Um, great, great. Uh, so we'll definitely do what we can to help publicize that as well. Um, so that's all of our announcements. Uh, at this time, I'd like to see if there's anybody from the public who wishes to make any comments. Um, yes. Mr. President, can I just add a couple sure. comments to that? Uh, because I see these two wonderful ladies in the audience and also knowing who the third is, South Orange Seniors and what they've announced, and um, Nan and Peggy, and Tonia have been just some of the most incredible volunteers that I've seen in this community before. They have, we have our Senior Citizens Advisory Committee, which I'm the liaison to, so I get to work with that committee, but also South Orange Seniors. And um, between the Senior Prom, working with myself for the overall Senior Town Hall Forum, which was the first that we've had for the Board of Trustees, these ladies are working an obscene amount of hours to serve the senior citizens population, whether it's aging in place, helping us with the new Jitney schedule for senior citizen transportation. Um, Nan gets up there, she talks about one event, but I think it's important for the community to know how important these ladies, three ladies, have been to the overall community, both inspiring myself, other members of the board, um, our staff in making changes for the benefit of senior citizens in this community and it it's not just the senior citizens prom it's public safety it's discount cards um, and I've never seen anything like it before and because they're sitting there I'd like to embarrass them and thank them and let them know that their work is recognized <laughs> by everybody who sits up here and hopefully the community at large even register ready and um, how we deal with emergency preparedness is I can't thank them enough for the work that they have given this village. And thank you. Thank you for adding that. 100%. Um, all right. Um, at this time, I would like to open the meeting up for public comments if there is anybody uh, who wishes to speak. <clears throat> Um, seeing as there's no members of the public who uh, would like to speak, let's move on to the approval of minutes. Um, and this is for the regular meeting minutes for January 12th. I move. Moved by Trustee Rosner. Second. Seconded by Trustee Clark. Um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Abstentions? All right. Let's move on to our ordinances for first reading. Ordinance 2015-05, Introduction and First Reading of an Ordinance to Amend the Code of the Township of South Orange Village, Section 152-34, Schedule 2, with, res <coughs> with respect to parking on the portion of Meadowbrook Lane. Thank you. Um, is there anything that anybody <coughs> wanted to add about this before we vote? Sure. This, you can go ahead. Trustee Clark, go for it. Uh, just as a little fill-in. Um, we met with concerned citizens from that neighborhood uh, a week or so ago, and uh, one issue they had was that in a particular section of uh, Meadowbrook Lane, um, they have cars parking uh, overnight sometimes, but uh, late into the hours that uh, create some safety issues. And uh, so Sheena is moving rather quickly to try to address some of that. Uh, and so the idea is to limit parking, but only in the overnight hours, uh, was it 9 p.m. to 6 a.m., uh, similar to what was done on the uh, other section of Meadowbrook Place. I'll add to that there was probably about uh, maybe 35, 40 residents who, who attended a meeting with the Public Safety Committee, myself, Trustee Clark and Trustee Rosner, to voice concerns about this. Trustee Clark is also dealing with lighting issues. But right now, uh, as we deal with parking situations, it's normally about where are we gonna push this? How is it going to impact others? This particular stretch that the ordinance um, addresses does not have homes that front on that street. Um, and from the concerns that were raised with residents was that, that there was public safety issues, I would say, 
quote unquote sketchy behavior, uh, things that occurred at a nighttime hour that shouldn't be occurring in not only this place, but any residential area where there wasn't a concern about the impact it would have on commuters or people who are parking for gas, et cetera. So this was our first step in trying to address an area where there wasn't single family homes, even multi you know, uh, family homes or apartments or anything where there would be an in inconvenience, but rather it was addressing solely a quality of life issue. Um, so uh, between this, the trustees on the public safety committee concurred. It was a good step in the right direction. Obviously, we worked with the police department to address any uh, concerns they had, and this is where we ended up between the administration, Mr. Lewis attended the meeting, the trustees, and the residents who voiced concern about this specific section. So we're confident that it's a step in the right direction. If it get res gets resolved, we can ultimately revert back to where it is today. But for the time being, it is um, of zero consequence to anybody who's using it for parking for um, the train station or for residents, et cetera. It is nighttime hours. And ultimately, if you're parking in a residential street and you don't live there and you're not using the train, et cetera, you shouldn't be there at the end of the day. I'm not sure why your car is there. So at, this, at least this provides the clearance for the police department to be able to go through, enforce any existing, existing laws, which hopefully this will provide, and provide more confidence and security to the people um, within the neighborhood that um, the activities that they have witnessed, which are documented, are no longer occurring on that street. Great, thank you. I move the ordinance. Okay, moved by Trustee Collum. Second. Seconded by Trustee Clark. Yes. Can we have the roll, please? Trustee Clark. Trustee Clark. Yes. Trustee Collum. Yes. <laughs> Trustee Davis Ford is absent. Trustee Levinson. Yes. Trustee Rosner. Yes. Trustee Schnall. Yes. Thank you. Resolutions on the consent agenda. Uh, before we get to that, oh, I move that the ordinance 2015-5 be <coughs> scheduled for second reading and the final passage at the March 23rd, 2015 board meeting and the public hearing be held at that time for the reference to ordinance. The village clerk was authorized to take the necessary actions to publish the public notice for such hearing. Okay, moved by Trustee Levison. Second. Seconded by Trustee Collum. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Uh, we'll try and speak up. Um, you can also, if you want to try and maybe sit a little closer as well. Um, let's uh, move on to our consent agenda. Okay, resolutions 2015-40 through resolution 2015-42 have been placed on the consent agenda. Okay, is there, are there any questions or comments or do I have a motion? Can we just also uh, briefly discuss 2015-42 and I would ask the administrator to just go through this very briefly. Yeah, and uh, this one is entitled Resolution Referring Proposal Rehabilitation Designation Resolution to South Orange Planning Board pursuant to uh, NJSA 4812A-14. As um, you'll recall, in connection initially with the redevelopment studies that were authorized for Irvington Avenue, uh, we ultimately all also authorized the planner to conduct a rehabilitation study, uh, which then turned into, um, when we realized the criteria, rehabilitation study for the entire village. Uh, the village planner did report back that it met the criteria, one of which is um, that the average uh, stock of the housing in town was in excess of 50 years old. In addition, another criteria is that the average age of the infrastructure, majority of the infrastructure, water and sewer, is over 50 years old. And the village engineer has uh, offered that uh, report as well. Um, so this is a, it will essentially designate uh, an overlay of a rehabilitation designation for the entire village. What that does gives a lot of flexibility in terms of um, providing uh, short-term tax abatements for eligible properties on certain areas. It additionally provides the ability to do redevelopment plans, which gives us certain flexibilities in zoning to accommodate um, uses. It, it's going to be, I, I think we're going to find it very helpful in terms of, and, and I, let, me, let me take a step, step back. The um, criteria for designation for redevelopment areas, which we've enjoyed in the downtown, which has helped spur all the growth growth that we've seen downtown has um, undergone some review by the courts which have made some of the criteria a little more difficult to reach 
so that this uh, rehabilitation designation, I think, gives us a lot of the flexibility to encourage that um, growth, renovation, rehabilitation, um, some limited tax relief, not as great as would be done in a redevelopment zone, but all of which we're confident will help us and give us the tools to continue to see the growth and, and sort of rehabilitation throughout the town. So. And I'll add on to that a rehabilitation designation. It was discussed in the planning board. Um, there is no eminent domain. What we're basically dealing with is short-term tax abatements to incentivize development, improvements, et cetera. So um, this is something that we could use for Irvington Avenue, which was kind of the genesis of going down this path. It's something that could be used for the Mary Lawn site. Um, even though it is a rehabilitation designation, ultimately you create a redevelopment plan for sites that you're interested in. And the most that you can get out of that is a um, five-term tax abatement for improvements on the existing site. I welcome Mr. Rother to correct anything that I'm saying wrong. Um, and so for a townwide uh, rehabilitation designation, and Trustee Rosner had reported on this through his work with the Planning and Zoning Committee, is that that, that is the maximum. But it is an additional tool it is not government kind of overstepping, trying to do anything on its own. It is mainly incentive-based um, via tax-wise how we get to where we're going. Um, through the Irvington Avenue Corridor Advisory Committee, which will shortly be renamed the Seton Village Committee, they are supportive of it. Um, through our own Villages Code Review, they are supportive of it. And um, ultimately, the Seton, or not the Seton Village, uh, the um, South Orange Village Center Alliance is also supportive of it. So uh, the thing that we can get through the townwide rehabilitation designation is offering incentives for improvements through the use of tax abatements and exemptions in the future. Um, are there any questions about that from the trustees? Okay. I move the consent agenda. Okay. Moved by Trustee Collum. Second. Seconded by Trustee Rosner. Can we have the roll, please? Trustee Collum? Yes. Trustee Davis Ford is absent. Trustee Levison? Yes. Trustee Rosner? Yes. Trustee Schnall? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the approval of bills. I move that the bills list ordered by the village treasurer, dated February 23rd, and distributed to the Board of Trustees previously. Okay, moved by Trustee Levison. Second. Seconded by Trustee Collum. Can we have the roll, please? Trustee, Trustee Davis Ford is absent. Trustee Levinson? Yes. Trustee Rosner? Yes. Trustee Schnall? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. Trustee Collum? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have trustee reports listed tonight. I don't know if there's anything. We did all of them pretty much the last meeting. Um, so, Trustee Collum, is there anything that you'd like to update in this meeting I do have a lot but um, <laughs> I always Surprise I always guys. have a lot I think the most important component was that internally both in closed session and amongst discussion within the Public Safety Committee is that in terms of the scheduling the table of organization um, understanding the needs of the board's policies regarding enforcement, traffic safety, pedestrian safety, et cetera, is that at the next meeting, we are anticipating promotions both within the police department um, with an individual who be moving into a lieutenant's position um, to oversee uh, traffic safety and community relations, and that within the fire department, we are anticipating the naming of a new fire chief and through discussion within the Board of Trustees that will ultimately lead to the acceleration of deputy chiefs and also captains as a result of the decision we made internally. Um, and based on the discussions that we've had amongst uh, the Board of Trustees, I just want to make it very public that at the next meeting that we will be anticipating those promotions to occur. Okay, thank you. At the recommendation of the Public Safety Committee, the Police Department, the fire department, the administration, and hopefully, ultimately, the board of trustees as a whole. Okay, thank you. Um, Trustee Levison, is there anything? Trustee Schnall? Yeah, um, just a couple things. The, the Recreation and Cultural Affairs Committee uh, won't be meeting until uh, later this week, but a couple of items that I want to share with uh, the trustees as well as the overall community. Um, 
Coming up on March 29th, thank you. Coming up on March 29th will be the Volunteer Summit, which is uh, typically an annual event. Uh, we do last year was held at Seton Hall, and it's an opportunity for various nonprofits and organizations uh, to come together, share best practices, uh, talk about how they recruit new volunteers, um, and just uh, you know sort of have an opportunity to get together and, and share ideas. Uh, so again, that will be actually in this uh, SOPAC loft uh, on Sunday, March 29th. Uh, announcements will be going out uh, during the next few weeks, but I just figured I'd let you guys know about that. Um, also coming up, uh, hopefully in sync with that, will be uh, a new village calendar. I would have to say probably more than anything I have ever heard in, in town in terms of things that people are looking for, uh, about <coughs> one specific item would be a town-wide calendar uh, that would address the, the not only things that the village is doing, but uh, organizations. It's a, it's a way for organizations to actually um, avoid conflicts with other events that are happening on those days. Um, and as you all know, on our own website, we have a calendar, but it is only for, uh, for village-based, village-sponsored activities. This calendar of events would be hosted by the Village Center Alliance uh, and not have that restriction. I know they're working currently on policy on what would be included, um, but uh, it would be a great uh, vehicle to actually to be able to go to one place that will uh, be able to tell us where and what's going on. Um, that's what I got. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, is there anybody from the public who wishes to comment at this time? Okay, um, seeing as there's nobody from the public who wishes to comment, uh, was there anything that you wanted to add about? Yep. I do. All right. Um, this one I'm very, very excited about. Uh, this is something that I know several people have been discussing for quite a period of time. Uh, I actually alluded to it at our last meeting, and now I can formally announce that the inaugural uh, event of South by South Orange will be happening the last weekend in June. Uh, this is kind of, if you recognize the name, uh, there is a conference, a, a big festival that is in Austin, Texas. That's been going on for a number of years now called South by Southwest. It's actually a play on the, the old movie North by Northwest. Uh, it was a, originally a music festival that attracted lots and lots of people, not only locally but uh, regionally, and now it has expanded to nationally as well as internationally. Uh, the festival is now uh, music, technology, creative arts, some film, obviously there's food. Um, so that is, that's a big thing, and we just thought that borrowing that name and leveraging off of that that name would be a great thing. It's, it sort of perfectly fits into South by South Orange here. Uh, this will be, as I mentioned, the inaugural event. Our, our, the, hopeful, the hope is that this would be something that would organically grow. We would experience to see how it works out. Um, and uh, most likely, we're still we're, we're doing the planning right now. We would probably begin on Friday night. I should also say I, I left out an actually important aspect that this will be uh, produced in cooperation between the village of South Orange and Seton Hall University. Seton Hall is, has uh, demonstrated a great interest in, in participating and uh, actually helping to fund some of these activities. A number of professors uh, are interested in speaking. So again, it will be a combination, more details will be coming out, but it will be a combination of music, of conferences around innovation and creativity, uh, and, and the, uh, the cultural arts. Um, the theme for this year uh, we're going to go with is, is causing collisions. And I think that's sort of a catchy name and a topic, causing collisions, which sometimes, especially for senior citizens, sounds like a kind of a, a not favorable negative connotation. Here in South Orange, though, we actually, uh, we welcome it. And not only do we welcome it, but we see it all the time uh, in our diversity of population, in terms of uh, financial position between the haves and the have-nots, between uh, development and historic preservation between uh, relaxing at home and going out and, and becoming a fully engaged resident. There are a number of things. Um, so that's sort of going to be the theme is causing collisions. Uh, you'll see more about that over the weeks. Um, but I just did want to sort of share and ask if there's any questions. But I'm, I'm very excited. Again, it will be the last weekend in June. 
The location for the event will be uh, here in, in SOPAC because this is a great facility to, to, to show. We also will be uh, using venues at Seton Hall and uh, around the village. Uh, there'll be music that uh, some of the, the larger shows will be here at SOPAC, but we expect that various different restaurants and bars um, will want to have uh, smaller groups play at their uh, venue. And we may even have some outdoor, since it is the end of June, weather should be nice, we would expect uh, as well to have some outdoor music as well. Great. Uh, All right, thank I you. Uh, I would like to offer the services of SOS. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll, we'll take you up. But we will need lots of volunteers. We had a, I don't know if the, if the folks out there could, could hear, but there was an offer from uh, the, the uh, senior citizen, the, the SOS committee, South Orange uh, seniors, uh, to participate and volunteer, and we will welcome that. Thank you. Great. Uh, another item of uh, discussion. Um, I hope in the next uh, couple of meetings to be bringing forward uh, a New Jersey Department of Transportation uh, alternative transit grant proposal to uh, continue to uh, help fund the. Uh, specifically the southern section of the River Greenway project and try to keep that moving along uh, by a grant process. I uh, hope we're working with Adam on that in the next couple of weeks and get back to you with more information. All right. Thank you. Adding one more thing, um, embarrassing another member <laughs> of the audience is earlier, uh, Tonia, I spoke a little bit about SOS and the work that you're doing for the community, as you've seen. Uh, you have Nan and Peggy, and who joined us was Tonia, who is the third representative of South Orange Seniors, also a representative on the South Orange uh, Advisory Committee for uh, Senior Citizens. So we gave kind of uh, a shout out to the work that you're doing for our community. So I want to make sure to recognize you now that you're here for all the work that you're doing for South Orange Seniors. Um, all right, unless there's anything else, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? I move. Moved by Trustee Collins. Yes. Seconded. Seconded by Trustee Rosner. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Alex, do you want to give a little overview of when the Stay of the Village is going 830. to? 830. 830, so people tune in at yep. 830, 830, and we'll be back for the Stay of the Village. That is correct. Perfect. Heather Elias Solomon was the winner of the CHS Poetry Out Loud competition and represented the school in a countywide competition at SOPAC. Just going to take a break. If any of the people I just mentioned are here today, will you please stand up and